Krista. Anybody's got my dang call? That's perfect. I think we should have 20 things. All right. So good afternoon. We'll real quickly go over to Silvis. I'll get your questions, and we'll get started with this. We'll talk about Canvas. What I have in Canvas, um, the calculator, things like that. <coughs> All right. So we'll start with the Silvis. I'll talk about two documents too. So yeah, I like to give out three documents on the first day. First, just the Silvis, of course. My officers are there, so feel free to stop by. I'm right upstairs. <coughs> take the elevator right up there, and. and uh, it's room 231. The textbook. All right, mine looks like this. Does it look like that at the bookstore? Some students rent it and stuff. So it does. It looks like that. And it comes with the solution manual. Um, that solution manual is nice for support if you want to see how the author worked out the problem or his wording he used if you have to interpret like a slope or something like that. So that's good for support. You don't bring the solution manual every day. I encourage you to bring the textbook because I'll be you know referring to problems out of the textbook. Uh, but you don't have to. So if you didn't bring your textbook, I wouldn't be saying, you know, John, where's your textbook? Why isn't it there? But uh, I encourage you to bring it. Um, but that's the textbook you'll need. We don't use my math lab in this course. Um, but this is the textbook we're using. So if you have questions about the textbook, let me know. Yeah, cell phones, I just ask you to turn them off you know, in class or put them on the library. It's in silence. So appreciate that. Um, so there's no distractions. Tenants and homework, yeah, if you miss more than two classes, you know, your grade can be lower, but I put that note there because of, it's usually for someone who misses 12 days. And you're 12 days, you don't miss like 12 days in the semester, and at the end of the semester, it's like, you know, is there any way I can pass this class? You know, no, your grade kept getting lowered every time after you missed the third day. So that's really what that note's for. But if you missed three classes, one time you overslept, you know, you work a night job. You came in and took a nap. You just overslept. Another time you were ill. Third time you had to pick up your mother from the hospital or something. That's fine. So I don't want you to get too stressed about that. You know, two. That's why the wording I used there was like, you know, it may be. It's really geared towards the person that's in the 12, 12 days. These are the practice problems. These are really good for each one of the tests. All right, hand picking these from the textbook. Um, if you want to write on this right now, go right ahead. Do you see the uh, see that first portion there? For the practice problem, that's for test one. So test one about the 3.2. If you want to write on there, just to get an idea. All right, test one will cover that. Up to 2.2. Yep, up to 3.2. That'll be test one. Chapter one's all the definitions and words like that. Today's not the most enjoyable. <coughs> I'll try to make it fun, but it's like you know, you can understand terms, and we'll get into a little math. It starts getting a lot better in chapter three. So that's why there's so many sections there. You're like, Getting the basics down. A lot of you will be familiar with that stuff too, just from your, your experiences taking mathematics previously or in high school. 3.4 to 4.2, that's test two. And then 5, 1 to 6, 2 is test three. 7, 1 to 8, 2, test four. And then lastly, there's a test five in here. We get up to 10.3 in test five. Now, ask, after test five, you can look at that. Um, on the back of the syllabus. So now we get there, you can look at, this is like, I say tentative schedule, because look, even a, something might happen to the schedule because of the weather. I mean, 8 a.m. classes this morning got lost, right? So something might happen, so I write tentative, but basically that's how we're run. That's basically how the days will come. You know, if we have to adjust it though, because it's <laughs> not um, But after test five, do you see there's some open days there? After test five? That's where we're gonna cover the chapter 11 material. So after test five, we'll do you know chapter eleven, and what that means is the final exam is cumulative. I'll probably put like one problem, one problem from the on a final exam from that chapter eleven material. And I'll be able to put one problem. That's what we'll spend time on. That's fun stuff too. Like everything is geared towards something called a hypothesis testing, and that's what we do at the end. So that's cool. So I don't collect these. I don't collect these summer problems. But I encourage you to do them because it's really good practice. Um, I always say that, you know, what I'm doing on the board, the problems we're doing in class is representative of what you'll see on an exam. So I'll say that twice, so you're not getting so stressed about, you know, problem number 102 out of the textbook. But what I do in class is representative of what's on the test, right? And these are really good, good to practice as well. I'm, I'll probably do a couple of these today, too. All right, so take good notes. If you missed, you know, notes, maybe uh, 
ask one of your classmates to say, it. Okay, copy your notes. Canvas. Now in Canvas, I have a lot of supportive stuff. I use the same material for my online class. And uh, I just found, so I'll be honest, I found something two days ago that was really good. It was brand new. Someone made something called an e-text. So I just want to let you know it's in Canvas. And uh, it's our author, his name is Michael Sullivan. He paired with another guy named Woodbury. And uh, it's just something called an e-text. Well, it's there, and boy, I'll tell you, if you're like, if you're going to go a week and you don't have a textbook, but you want to kind of stay on task with understanding the material, you just go in there. You'll see, I put it way at the beginning of Canvas. It's an e-text. It's got the whole textbook. I mean, it's really well done. It's well organized. One of the best things I've ever seen. For like, oh, you want to do a practice problem. It's so much better than my stat lab. I'm serious. You click this. Show the work. Show the example. Oh, I'm going to click on a TID4 video to show me how to enter this in. Well designed. I mean, so it's really well. Um, I'll be using this in my online course as well because it's great for an online student. So that's something I would encourage you. Just if you miss class, stop and look at it. It's really good. You want to just kind of click through it and go through it and see some of the things they have. They have something called a chapter review. Holy cow. I was like, wow. Like the chapter review, it would give like, all right, here's some practice problems to work. And you immediately can just hit show example or show the answer. You click on it, shows it. It's like you can click on a video. Um, if you want to take, you know, we have a lot of data in this course. You want to just take data and copy and paste it into like a Microsoft Excel sheet. Yep, boom, boom. You can do that. So it's, it makes it real easy. It facilitates that kind of stuff. So that's cool. Getting help. Um, of course, email me at any time, come to my office. There's, I do want to say the math tutoring lab in the library room 102 has tutoring. But there's only one course where it might be like, eh, it's statistics. You go in there and it's someone who knows everything from algebra 1 to differential equations and calculus. And they're like, oh, I'm not really good with stats. So if that happens, I know. They're always trying to get more stat tutors in there. So, hey, do well in this class. And then, hey, eventually you can become the stat tutor over there because they usually need something. Yeah, and I just, for disruptive behaviors, you just don't talk in class. Like, sometimes you're not doing it on purpose, you're just talking with your neighbor about something to be distracting others, but I'll take care of that as well. You know, make sure to say something to that person, so just, you know, not in a negative way, just to say, hey, people can't hear me, so please don't talk in class. Hey, any questions for me? Awesome. Hey, uh, is anybody, is this your last class of the day? I'm just curious. Show of hands. You see how many there are? Hey, have you ever seen a Tuesday, Thursday at 1.45 out in the parking lot? Oh, it gets, it gets crazy. All right, so it gets a little crazy. So I, what I always do is probably about one, maybe about five up. I will usually end it right then. And then people can come up and ask me any questions they want or work around stuff. Does that sound good? It's, it, that little five minutes can sometimes save the student 20 minutes sitting in the what? In the parking lot. Okay, so it works well. <laughs> if I did last semester, it was fine. Hey, I'll get started, and feel free to ask me those questions at the end. We start in 1.1. This is elementary two sisters. All right. Elementary sisters. We'll start with, how about a definition? Yeah, what is statistics? And we'll keep it short. I know you can read the text. You can read the definition out of the textbook, right? Well, then, how about this? For statistics. Or a statistic, we'll just say, well, let's see, it's a numerical summary. How about that? It's a numerical summary. Statistics is a numerical summary. <clears throat> Baseball player's batting average. Okay, it's a numerical summary. Uh, that was Tom Brady's passer rating. It's a numerical summary. It's, it's, it's numerical, right? It's summarizing something. It's giving a summary of what they did. Right, that's about his passer performance, right? That's his batting average. So, uh, statistics is a numerical summary. You read in the book, you might say, well, it's a numerical summary of a sample. So, let's go over these two words. Right away, population and sample. Sample is a subset of the population. Yeah, the 
sample is a subset of the population. So let's give some examples so we get make sense of that. Um, let's say that we're talking about it for a population. I'm defining the population to be in this particular situation all AACC students. So you know what a sample could be? This class. This class. He beat me to it. That was good. This class. That would be a sample. It's a subset of the what? Gigantic population. And we're talking about all AACC students. All right. If we define that as a population, sometimes they call it a target population because you're trying to target them with a question. You know, we want to see what the students think. All right. Well, they go out and they, we take a sample. That's what we do in statistics. We take a sample. We hope it's representative of the population, but it's a subset. A subset. This would be, you know, one sample of that. So a sample is a subset of population. But a lot of times, when a population can be like, well, all college students in the United States. <laughs> You're like, oh my gosh, all college students in the United States. Well, then a sample could be still this classroom trope, but it also could be this entire college. Who said that? All, I mean, all the students in the college. So you see, sometimes population, the actual number, the value it represents how many people in it, it could be in the millions, can it? I mean, sometimes it reaches millions and millions of people. This could be huge. Samples are when we keep them quite small. Not too small like four, but sometimes they're a thousand, sometimes they're five hundred, sometimes they're sixty, but it's a subset. So the first problem we're going to do on the book is we're going to read something and we're going to have to define all right, exactly what is the population they're trying to target and then we're going to mention the sample. We're going to write it out, okay? So we're going to name the population in this problem and then we're going to name the sample. Alright, that's the first thing we'll do. We're going to name the population, we're going to name the sample. I'm in uh, section 1.1. I'm on page 12 of our textbook. And I'm going to do number 39. I'll read this to you if you have your textbook. The Gallup organization, context 1,028 teenagers. <coughs> who are 13 to 17 years of age, live in the United States, and they ask them whether or not they've been prescribed medications for any mental disorders, such as depression or anxiety. I'll reread that too. You and I are going to talk about what's the target population in the sample. Again, the Gallup organization contacts 1,028 teenagers who are 13 to 17 years of age, living in the United States, and asked whether or not they've been prescribed medication for any mental disorders such as depression or anxiety. Okay, so we're going to start out with the population. Um, I heard a number in there. Do you hear that number? 1028. Yeah, 1028, 1028. That is not the population. That's not the population. We don't know that number. A lot of times you don't. Sometimes it changes every hour, every minute. It's just changing. So how about when we start out this phrase, when we define or talk about the population, want to start with the word all? I'll start with all. All. <laughs> all. What can I say now?